Sylvester Stallone has done many iconic movie roles in his long career, but one of his most recent roles is one many want to see again. Stallone voiced King Shark in The Suicide Squad, and many people have been awaiting his return to the character. But did you know he's already spoken on this? Well, stay tuned to today's video as we discuss how Stallone has confirmed his return to his best role. First up, Sylvester Stallone confirms his return to King Shark. Sylvester Stallone is one of the most iconic actors in history, and many people would think if he was returning to one of his old roles, it would be someone like Rocky Balboa or even John Rambo. However, most recently, he was speaking to comicbook.com's Chris Killian, where he confirmed that he would be returning to one of his most iconic roles in recent history, that being King Shark, the man shark demigod that he portrayed in James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. He said he would be returning to the character in some capacity again. The comment came after the actor was asked whether he would ever return to the character or work with James Gunn at any point in the future. Stallone said that, yeah, he would for sure, and he thinks that James Gunn is a very generous person. They're on very good terms, so if there's an opportunity to return, he would definitely do it as he loves James Gunn. He's great. James Gunn has now been announced as the lead of the next wave of DC movies as the co-CEO of the newly formed DC Studios. This means that James Gunn, alongside producer Peter Saffron, will be running DC in the future and should be making some phenomenal projects out of the source material. They're joined by this new production company, which replaced DC Films and is now the production company behind the current slate of DC comic book movies in the next four years of their projects. Both Gunn and Saffron have signed a four-year contract with an exclusive commitment to Warner Brothers Discovery as part of their deal. This means that James Gunn will probably no longer be working on any Marvel movies, as he's now done with the Guardians of the Galaxy. He stated in an interview a while back that this next Guardian of the Galaxy project is his final work on the team. He could return for other Marvel movies in the future after these four years are over, but let's see what he can do with DC from now on. James also recently held a massive meeting with the co-CEO of DC Films, Peter Saffron, as well as Warner Brothers Discovery CEO, David Zaslav. In his interview, they discussed in length what the overarching plan for the future of DC is going to be. And that being said, we could finally see DC pull itself out of the shadow of Marvel Studios and its ever-growing Marvel Cinematic Universe. DC has consistently been in the shadow of Marvel for years now and has struggled to find its own identity. It's only been in the last two years or so that we've seen DC make its mark with the Suicide Squad and the Batman, and maybe even something like Birds of Prey. All of their previous movies were just very generic, very dark, and very bland. But these three projects stood out and could be what the future of DC is going to be like. This is what James Gunn and Peter had to say on DC as a whole right now. The opportunity to make DC as great as it can be and should be. That is why I'm doing this job, because I know that Peter and I can do that, said Gunn. We spent the last couple of days with a group of some of the best thinkers in the industry, the best writers in the industry, starting to map out the 8-10 to 10 year plan of what it's going to look like in theater, in TV, in animation, across the board for these characters. Sylvester Stallone has been part of both Marvel and DC for a while now, as he played the Ravagers leader, Stakar Ogard, in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which is a role that he will most likely be returning to in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. He might have only had a few lines in Suicide Squad as King Shark, but his character became a massive hit with audiences around the globe, similar to something like Vin Diesel's Groot in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. In another recent interview, we also got to see Idris Elba, who played Bloodsport in the film, teasing that he was working on something big for DC in the future. This could perhaps lead to a Bloodsport TV series in the same vein in which Peacemaker got his series not long ago. This series was highly successful and could lead to other Suicide Squad members getting their series, such as Harley Quinn or, of course, Bloodsport. If Bloodsport does get his series, we might finally see Sylvester Stallone as King Shark return as he could team up with Bloodsport in the series for HBO. Both Bloodsport and King Shark had a pretty great relationship in the film, so perhaps James Gunn is planning on a sequel movie for them, which could reunite Bloodsport, King Shark, and Peacemaker all in one film, along with a new slate of low-tier DC supervillains. Regardless of what happens with King Shark's next appearance, Sylvester Stallone is going to return as the character, and he's going to be met with a lot of enthusiasm from fans around the world. Please let us know in the comments section below what do you think about King Shark and Sylvester Stallone's return to the character shortly. And now stay tuned for some more Sylvester Stallone news and information to wrap up today's video. Let's rank Sylvester Stallone's best roles of all time in a top 3 format. Number 3 – First
First Blood, 1982. First Blood was the movie that introduced the world to John Rambo, who is Sylvester Stallone's second biggest franchise hero. He's a veteran with impressive fighting skills and is left traumatized due to his time in the Vietnam War. In this first installment, we get to see him travel to Washington in search of an old military friend who he learns died due to cancer. Rambo ends up snapping and reverts to the brutal guerrilla tactics that he learned overseas to fight an escalating battle with the authorities. This leads to a massive franchise for the character, where he heads off on dangerous missions as one of the most insane fighters in cinematic history. The reason why the film is remembered is for the brutal action sequences that Stallone is most effective at. He also has a perfect emotional breakdown scene that sees Stallone's acting at its peak. Number 2. Rocky 1976 We had to have Rocky somewhere on this list, and many people might be confused why it's not at the top, but we'll get into that next. At this time, Stallone wasn't getting the acting roles that he wanted back in the mid-1970s, so he ended up taking matters into his own hands and writing one of the most indelible characters in cinematic history. Rocky was originally a sleeper hit and became one of the highest-grossing films in 1976 and even a three-time Academy Award-winning picture that ended up getting voted into the Best Picture category. This kicked off a long-running franchise that has been spanning for decades now and taken in more than $1.7 billion at the global box office. One of the most iconic scenes is those museum stairs or where the film reaches its emotional peak when Rocky and Adrian finally profess their love for one another after his bout with Apollo Creed. Finally, number 1. Creed 2015 It might sound a little blasphemous to put Creed at the top of this list, but let's get into it. Creed is a sequel to the Rocky franchise and follows the son of Apollo Creed, where Rocky has to train his former rival's son in the hopes of making him a better fighter than he ever was. The film itself sees Stallone in a retrospective and vulnerable way as he was rewarded with a Best Supporting Actor from the National Board of Review Awards, the Critics' Choice Awards, and even the Golden Globes. This also led to his first Oscar nomination since 1977. This film was a full-circle moment for him after decades of nostalgia with just great acting all around. The main reason we put this here is that it encapsulates Stallone's entire career as Rocky, and he gets to show off some of his best acting yet. Let us know in the comments section below your thoughts on our small list of Sylvester Stallone's best films, as well as what you would put in the top three. Please also let us know your thoughts on Sylvester Stallone as an actor in his later years, as he had definitely taken on some very wild roles. And that's the end of today's video. Hopefully, you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know in the comment section below? It'd be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thanks for watching today's video. Bye!